I'm Pat Fordham, I'm Chair of Phoenix. My name's Jim Ripley, I'm the Chief Executive of Phoenix Community Housing. My name's Steve Connor, um, I'm the client's uh, representative in the Green Main Development Project. I'm Brian Bailey, I'm Chairman of Bailey Garner LLP. My name's Rebecca Molina and I'm the Creative Director at Studio Raw. My name is uh, David Cummings, I'm the Vice Chair. Caused some right trouble with Pat, but never mind. It's their wishes and their dreams really, isn't it David? Because they have lost a big place that used to, we know it was a pub, but the, the hall beside it was used absolutely tremendously for all kinds of social gatherings and everything. We've lost that. We've lost, I think, four pubs along this road mm. in the last, what, eight years. I mean, the Green Man has been empty for nearly nine years, and we've only just started building on it, so you can imagine that's not been in the area for a long, long time. So the next stage for us was to get a viable scheme for the Green Man. So we had a design competition, and um, a number of notable architects put in schemes, and the residents chose the scheme that we're currently building. When we look at the design, uh, I think the strength of the design from Black Architects is that it actually does reflect the core values of the client. And that was quite unique in terms of their design approach. We've caused um not ructions, but let's just say the amount of people that have seen that building now going up cannot believe what it looks like. They're absolutely thrilled to bits. If you look back over history, public buildings were built to be noticed. They weren't built to be recessive. They were part of the cultural capital of a place and an area. The pub wasn't a shrinking violet, the one we knocked down. You, know, you knew it was there. It was a big piece of building that said, I'm a public facility. You think of banks, you think of libraries, you think of all sorts of buildings, schools. They were all built with a, a notion of civic pride. And I hope that what our building will do is reintroduce the notion of a pride in that place and a collective pride in that community. And that will, yeah, I hope that that will be noticed by others and it will start to change the fortunes of that area because it really deserves it and the people that live there deserve it. And again, you know, that's, that's what real architecture for me is about. You know, it's about making things better. It's about making a positive change. I've got an open mind and, and, I, and the longer I've got into it, the project, I mean, the, the more I like it. And now it's an integral part of the project. The architecture is part of it. It's a sustainable building. And when we talk about sustainability, it means not just that it's, it's doing as little damage as possible to the environment, but it's sustainable for what it has inside it. So the business and the community hub and the square and the, and the barn. And the fact that all the constituent parts of wood have been um, pre-made in, in a factory in Austria and all fit together and slot together, I've come to really like it. The footprint, the impact that that building leaves in the environment is more positive than negative. So there's a sort of genuine desire to make sure that the building itself does not harm the environment, uh, that it's designed, it's specified and it's built in the most sensitive way. And I think some of the components uh, which are uh, in the design, in the construction, uh, are fairly tried and tested. They are elsewhere. But when you put the package together with the timber frame, uh, the solar collection and everything else that's gone into that building, it actually represents a, a, quite a unique package in that design. And again, I think the sustainability element feeds through to Phoenix's general culture, its vision, 
uh, and the way in which it wants to present itself within the local community. So we worked quite closely with Blacks, the architects, that got the original design for the building in place. And our first step from the design process was to create a brand for the Green Man. So we looked at the structure and the form of the building um, to try and influence some of our design responses. And we also looked at the surrounding area of where the building was located. And we worked quite closely with Phoenix to ensure that what, was, what we were producing was relevant to its location. You need to be bold and you need to be courageous. You need to be able to have bright colours. You need to show that it's inviting. You need to make people feel that it's something that they want to explore. It's not only Phoenix's headquarters, but it's uh, hopefully home to a number of other organisations that will provide uh, a variety of services for the community. So you're trying to um, not only meet Phoenix's needs, but also um, the, the needs of the partners that we've been developing relationships with over the last couple of years. We were invited in to uh, contribute to see how we might uh, take some space on uh, in a project and open a branch there. So we've been, since then, that time, we've been working with Phoenix about incorporating our, a branch within the ground floor area, which is seen as the communal hub of the building. To see the training kitchen heavily utilised uh, would be fantastic and the potential for people coming away from those training courses, getting jobs, good jobs and building their careers and the way in which the credit union will service the community as well. I think to go back maybe a year or 18 months after completion and to walk into the ground floor foyer, the hub area and it to be alive with plenty of activity, lots of people moving around, lots of discussion, good energy coming from that area uh, will be a sign of its success. I just hope that the building delivers value and by that I mean it improves the way Phoenix, the people who work in Phoenix and work for Phoenix interact, share knowledge, communicate, become more efficient because they're together working in a simple single environment, they're not split over multiple floors but they're all in one forum working together and I hope that drives a level of efficiency um, throughout the, the business side of it. I hope that the community really engage with the community hub and the barn and the and the new square. I mean, that's the other you know the other exciting thing about this is it's not only about buildings; it's about new civic outdoor spaces as well. And I'm hoping that you know the sort of inside outside boundaries between the barn, the square, and the community hub all kind of get blurred. And there are times when there's stuff going on outside and inside both buildings, and there's kids running in and out. And it's just a really dynamic, vibrant place that people want to be in, want to engage with and want to you know, share, learn, develop, grow collectively and as individuals. And that, you know, you know, community hub in the true sense of the world, something that you know, makes more than the sum of the people that adds something to the spirit of a community and gives them vim, vitality and you know, a positive look towards the future. And it really is, you know, it's a, a catalyst for positive social change. So really and truly, it's not just an office or a housing association's dwelling, it will be a community hub. And the idea is that it brings people through the doors, even if they're not Phoenix tenants, they don't have to be Phoenix tenants. The sky's the limit, really. Once you're actually there, it's kind of thinking outside your box and actually putting their things there that people want mm. and not what the housing association wants or us as residents want, we want to know what everyone wants to do. Everyone, we want to make sure that this, the green man is actually the benefit of the community. No one, no, no um, restrictions to anyone. Mm. Everyone is welcome. Opening up to ideas they might have, 
feeling as though they're being supported in that space because of the, the business op uh, startup opportunities that they have there. And if that, if we set out to do that and it's achieved, it would just be fantastic for us. I think the fact that if we can have old, young, you know, all different walks of life actually sitting and talking, exploring, sharing and learning from one another, the green man is doing its job. At this moment in time, the project's going really, really well. It hasn't been without its kind of ups and downs, but I think that's to be expected with all developments. I think everyone's getting um, quite excited, maybe a little nervous, because uh, you know that we're getting closer and closer to uh, the time when it will be completed and we'll be moving in. So, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's going really well. And to be only five years old and to be able to make that statement that will be made when the, when the building is open uh, is, is very successful. Uh, and I think what it really does, it lays that, that solid foundation stone uh, for Phoenix to move forward uh, and, and continue to develop uh, as a successful organisation. I don't think you will be able to have any other impression when you go to the office other than uh, this is a successful organisation. That would be a wonderful legacy. You know, if we went back there in five or ten years' time, and we saw that as you know the first seeds of regeneration, and three or four or five other things, and new businesses coming in there, and new people wanting to live there again, and just the whole area slowly being transformed, yeah, I'd be absolutely delighted with that.